Hi, I'm Tara Stubbins. I'm a celebrity assistant, certified lifestyle manager, and time management expert. You can find me at takeiteasyconcierge.com. And thanks for listening to the Rockstar of Real Estate, realestatepodcastshow.com. Good morning. Paul Andrigo here. Toronto Real Estate Unfiltered is the series. Realestatepodcastshow.com is the media channel. Just on my morning walk, so you'll probably hear noise, traffic, cars, people, all that good stuff. And uh, that's reality. That's for me, that's my day. That's why uh, I record the way I do, which is very often on the road, because of the fact that that is real life. So today's message is my thank you message. We're just at the midpoint in a couple of hours. We're uh, June 1st, so we're at the midpoint of 2020. Uh, It's fair to say not too many of us saw this year coming. Uh, Very few were prepared. But if you're listening to this, you made it. You made it to the halfway mark. That's pretty good, Uh, and I think it definitely is a reason to stop for me and simply just thank you, each and every one of you. Thank you for the compliments. Thank you for the criticisms. Thank you for every single one of you that has let me be part of your move. Uh, Whether it's coming into Toronto or the GTA or leaving, many of you are uh, at the point now where you've been here for enough long time that it's uh, it's been a good year to uh, maybe take what you've got, take the equity that you've built up, make that uh, out of town move uh, and have that security fund. Uh, follow you, which is for me one of the best parts um, about helping you guys who have been uh, working so hard. And and I speak to so many of you each week uh, that have uh, been working hard every week as much as you can to pay down your mortgage. Uh, Some of you are really close to the zero point, but it's not even about that because just being a homeowner or a condo owner, many of you, uh, again, have been in a position where your properties made money while you sleep. So you don't even have to have your mortgage paid off to be mortgage free on your move if you're in the right property, if your marketing of your property when you're selling is done correctly, if all the check marks are there You'll be like my clients have been um, over the years when they made a smart move from their existing property to their next one. And you'll be able to head to your new place, be able to pay for it, sometimes, you know, 100% in cash that you've got from your sale that's in your hands before you make the move, by the way. So important right now. And then you've got what's available left over um, as your tax-free proceeds. And that is your security fund. That's what um, just gives you that little bit of room to breathe. Let's you have maybe a little bit of time off when, you know, the boss doesn't want you to. Or just to be able to say goodbye to the boss. Um, it's, it's, it's not 100% freedom. I'm not going to say that it means that you can do anything you want, but it gives you a little bit more flexibility in your decisions. Uh, and I think that, uh, even a little bit of that for a lot of people is freedom. So I really hope again, for all of you across the board, every single one of you I've connected with over the last 20 years, I want each of you to have that freedom because it's something that I want for myself 
and the way it works for me is what I want for myself, I want for you. This, isn't, this hasn't ever been about me reaching a certain level uh, and even thinking that it can be done alone, because it cannot. You know, I'm walking by, uh, I'm walking in the beach today. I'm walking past one of the first properties I've ever handled. And I'm remembering um, everything that I wanted when I started on this journey. And along the way, those of you who have also been part of the journey um, have made it possible for me to reach these goals and exceed them. So the big goal to discuss this year has to do with helping those in need. And that's really what I've wanted to make sure that I do um, above and beyond, especially as, as it's my 20th year. So the 20th year goal up until today was to provide 5,000 meals for the hungry and homeless. And I've wanted to set that goal because of the fact that um, many of you guys have helped me, many of you have helped me get to the point where I can feed my family and uh, put a roof over my head. So I thought of all the things I could do is to provide meals for those, again, who are hungry and those who are in food insecure, which is, uh, you know, a, a lot of people right now. I thought it would be good to set that goal, but it's not enough. At the beginning of the year, I thought to myself, can I do this? I've never done it before. Last year, I was able to provide 500 meals and it felt so good. I figured maybe I can 10x that, which I think is a good way to focus on my goals is to you know, take goals that I uh, really want to do well and, and just sort of you know, improve them and, and do more. So that's what I did, but I'm not quite there for my 2000, uh, 2020 target. So this is where I need you guys. And to make sure that we all want this badly enough, again, I want to make sure that you guys are in that place with me. So I want you to be right there mentally, physically. Uh, and the only way I can do that with you guys is with you guys moving, physically moving with me so that I can make sure that I direct that energy. So now I've decided to increase my goal. So I haven't reached my first goal, but I'm doubling that. And I think the reason it's going to work is because the more of you that are signed on with me, the more I can double that goal to 10,000 meals. And what it really means when I break it down to numbers, what it means is instead of helping 10 of you move, which is again a pretty modest goal considering 100 or 280 people moved last week in the city, I'm, I'm saying moving 10 people a year um, was a good starting number. So now I've moved it up to 20 uh, as the goal with 10,000 meals provided if I do hit that goal. So, and what I'm doing along with that 20 is I've decided to really make the reward a little bit more interesting because I didn't really have an award or a reward for that matter attached to this, but I actually did have plans to do, which I will still be doing, maybe might have to be in a virtual sense. I really hope not. Uh, I still really wanted to, this year on my 20th year, I wanted to close off a bar for the whole night and have everybody from the last 20 years that I've helped all over the world, anybody that can join us, in person is great and anybody who can't hopefully could be there virtually and I can figure out how to get somebody a beer over in the UK or in Texas or wherever you might be all you amazing people I've helped so what I'm going to do is as a reward for that goal is I'm going to be giving away just to make sure you guys understand how important this is to me 
I'm going to be giving away 21 days of vacation certificates. So not seven, not 14, 21. So if I hit the 20 number, I'm giving away 21 days. So that's going to be a week um, each, and I'm going to be giving away, uh, doing a draw. This is just for those people who have bought and sold with me in 2020. So that means if, you, if you've already done so this year, you're in. Um, but going forward, again, that's the, the, the target just got a little bit more, I hope, real. And you can maybe see yourself using one of these vac vacation, um, uh, resort vacation accommodation certificates. Now it's for accommodations. So it basically means that once you're wherever you're going to be, however you want to get there, because right now it's a very, uh, it's always sort of been, you know, your choice, but even now it's even more uh, complicated because of the fact that you can't actually um, even go through the border at this time. So I don't know how it's going to work in terms of the travel part. That will absolutely have to be your call. Uh, and it always has been, but it'll be a little trickier for you to figure that part out. But once you're there, wherever that is, then you've got the opportunity to, um, again, stay somewhere. And that part is uh, what the um, vacation, the, the resort accommodations certificate will just, you know, sort of say, uh, you know, to give you that sort of, you know, not having to think about that one thing. Uh, which I love doing and I've done different promotions with this before and we've sent people all over the world uh, through Century 21 on these uh, vacation uh, certificate uh, re resort vacation accommodation reward certificates. We've sent people um, all over the world to different places and uh, um, I always hear amazing stories and get those pictures uh, which always make me jealous uh, and make me want to think about going to that place because of you guys. I mean, you know, to hear your stories about it is always the best version of it. So that's where it is right now. That's my, my thank you um, card, which is what this is. I don't mail them out. It's just too much uh, right now. It's just too hard. Even with my own marketing that I do in different neighborhoods, um, if I'm not the one delivering it safely and making sure that no one's uh, being, you know, no one's health is being affected, including the postal workers. I, I do believe that if, again, if I uh, want to get a message out that has to be in print, which, you know, it's not my preference, but in some areas where people aren't all online, uh, that's the way it has to be done. So um, those I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that I do myself because I'm, I'm going to be the one making sure that it's uh, uh, delivered safely and, 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 uh, Again, making sure that I keep my minimum for me is 10 feet. And that's why I'm actually doing uh, any tours that I am doing with people who are uh, ready to go and have done their research uh, on properties and understand that it's not um, something that we're just going to go out and, you know, be um, looking in, in just general areas. So for specific tours, I have something I'm doing now called my 10 foot tours. So I'm making sure that we all keep 10 feet away from each other. Um, I've got all my proper PPE on, my gloves, my mask, everything else. Uh, and I try to make sure I bring along enough for others if they need it. But I do suggest you bring yours. Uh, and the same goes for my listings. I make sure that people who are going through um, do declare that they will wear a mask and gloves to keep um, others safe. And I think that's, again, when people who have to move, that's really... Um, the only way that it can be done uh, with respect to others. So here we go. I'll just say it one more time. My thank you card goes out to each and every one of you. And my thank you card dish uh, for, 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 for as we go into the second half of 2020, which I'm predicting will be um, full of amazing moves for each one of you that's listening. Um, could be just, again, moving to the area you've always wanted to move, realizing that you're not stuck anywhere. And if you're renting, same goes for you. You've actually got access, which I don't know if you know this as a renter or as a first time buyer. The government, Ottawa, has put aside 1.25 billion. And I said B, 
with a, a billion with a B to assist you guys in down payment assistance to allow you to buy your own property, to say goodbye to the landlord, never fear having to get kicked out by someone that's um, you know, in control of where you live. So you get the chance to, again, own your own property, secure your future, and it doesn't allow, it doesn't require you to have to put an additional amount of money down. The government, in, in essence, becomes the second mortgage with the portion that they assist you with. So there's a few, you know, a few things you need to be aware of, but what it does is it gets you in a position where you are then the owner of a property and you get all the benefits. You get all the equity, you get all the leverage, and you can do so much with that that, you, again, you will not learn about in school. And that's the biggest thing for me with my own kids. Uh, my kids are yeah, young. They're ones in grade school, ones in high school. And still, all the homework that I've ever helped them with has never talked about you know, mortgages and debt and, and financial goals and all that stuff that, for me, is sort of the basis of future security. And it's not about just, you know, having the money, um, but it's about knowing what it all does and, and how it works, especially while you're young. And I'm telling you now, for those of you with children who can, you know, play video games for hours, <laughs> which is my kids too, um, those of you, those of your kids who love programming, they have the intelligence, probably more than any of us did at their age, to understand financial um, uh, financial education. To be, and I was talking with a client yesterday about this, and he was also stating the same thing. Um, he has uh, people in his family. He was talking about, um, uh, I guess, nieces and nephews of his that they're in university they're you know they're they're out in the world but when it comes to their financial literacy some of them have three you know three university degrees but don't know how to explain amortization the breakdown of payments of a mortgage don't understand the difference between good debt and bad debt there is a difference so i want you guys to be part of that movement now when you're working with me you're getting all of that and this includes right now for for i'm going to extend it for a little bit longer but my e-courses that are on my website realestatepodcastshow.com um, i've taken the paywall off for a little while i want right now people to focus on getting educated and that includes those of you maybe in high school um, my theory is with my own kids is that if you're old enough to ask about money you're old enough to learn about it and it's not something that i you know, I, I definitely um had done for me i wasn't given i wasn't put through any um rigorous training or or education it was just something that when i was about 16 i don't know why or when or, or how it happened but i um i stumbled upon a book called personal finance for dummies i still have the exact book and I've actually sent a copy, uh, digital copies, to clients of mine and their kids to give them the chance to learn it. And when I read that book, for me, because I've never, I'd never been, you know, I've never been exposed to that information before, um, it was, uh, it was just pure magic at that moment. Just explaining how everything from savings um, to investments to real estate to everything. It was just, it was, it's a great sort of. Um, intro to all this stuff and that's really all it takes is if any of this stuff is introduced early i think it becomes something that can grow and be part of all the other decisions that you make including if you're making the decision to take on any debt whatsoever and again there are again good debt and bad debt and, and education can be a good debt but if you are doing it in a direction that you might not end up in, which unfortunately is the reality for a lot of people, it might end up becoming bad debt. So you want to be able to offset that. You want to make sure that you make smart investments that will help you get past that stage so that when you're starting your life, as I want for myself and my children, I want for you and your children. I don't want my kids starting life in the hole if I can prevent it. Um, they're going to definitely earn where they, uh, you know, their keep if they're, even if they're living at home, they're buying groceries, they're 
you know, working around the house, they're painting. Um, I've started that now. I mean, like just my daughter's an incredible cook and she's really uh, pulling her weight at home right now. Uh, and my son is learning to clean his room and it's taking, you know, um, reminders for both of them to just understand that's how this works. But for all of us, I just don't want um, my kids coming out of school or coming out of high school or university for that matter with uh, a huge amount of debt that they just could never get on top of and it just keeps growing. That's the one thing that they don't tell you when you're sitting in with the guidance counselor in high school, because I know they didn't tell me, uh, is that, uh, you know, what happens when that student loan uh, becomes too, too hard to pay? Guess what? They don't forget about it. <laughs> I remember making my final payment and just being so happy that I got rid of it. Um, and then what I did with the money that I was able to save, and I saved from 18 to 24, uh, for me, it was just I was just so focused after I read the book that I spent six years saving money. I bought the cheapest car that I could. I, I you know I just I saved as much money. And again, this was not with any help. This was just me focused on at the time collecting as much as I could for that down payment because that was for me that was the ticket. And then when I was 24, I was able to make that decision. And it doesn't matter if you're 24 or 29 or 30 or 40. But making good decisions in your life, um, you know, again, decisions that you're going to be happy about and you're going to look back and say, I'm so glad I did that. Um, that's part of what, you know, me saying thank you to you is for, because a lot of you, again, have invested in me and made it possible for me to reach my goals. And I want to do the same for each of you. And right now, my focus is, again, just helping you make a smart move out of the rental that you're in, into your own place, from the rental that you're in to maybe a better rental so that you can save the money that, you know, like if, if I can help you save $500 a month, you could put that money into your future purchase. I've had a bunch of people do that over the years and it's made a huge difference uh, in accelerating their uh, move to their own place. And I'm not talking about, again, you know, like I, I, I do refer to it as an empire. Obviously, I want you to build your own empire. But for you, it might just be just owning your own condo. I, I helped a teacher do that uh, about two years ago. And um, he still says that it's the best single decision he's ever made. And it took him a long time to get there. He'd been with a very, you know, very educated, super smart guy. It took him a long time to get his head around the idea. And when I sent him his recent... Um, uh, update on his property value uh, he was once again very happy to get his report card because yes I do send monthly report cards to all of you when you're signed up with me and that's part of my property protection program it's just something that I've done um, and I don't send them monthly if you don't want them I send them every three months or six months or a year but definitely definitely you should make sure that you get one now it's the mid-year mark a lot of people are asking me for theirs. You should be on that list. So all you got to do is head over to my um, realestatepodcastshow.com uh, uh, website. And uh, anywhere that you can fill out um, a property valuation uh, form or in the selling section. And you don't have to sell to get this done. I don't make it that difficult. But I do try to make it so that um, it's easy for you to find out. And then stay on top of it. So if you like the way it's going, it's like anything else. You just hold on to your cards. If you like your, if you, if you like your hand, just sit there and <laughs> keep playing the game. But if at some point you don't like your hand and you feel like you want to fold, guess what? Last week, 280 people in Toronto folded. That means they threw in their cards, they sold, uh, and other people bought their properties. And life goes on, they move to the next place. And most years, I think between 80 to 100,000 people will move in the city. Um, most years, I, I don't know if it's going to be as much this year, but that part doesn't really matter because, again, I don't focus on anyone else's economy uh, when I'm thinking about what I want, and, and I don't want you to either. So focus on your economy, and as you do, and you make your moves with me, if 20 of you do this year, 10,000 people, 10,000 people will have meals, the hungry, the food insecure, people that you may not even think need 
help with this, they do. Right now, they do. So that's the way I want to, again, pay it forward in the biggest way I can. But I can't do it without you. I can't, I can't obviously donate all of that without <laughs> Uh, you guys donating or, or, or investing in me so that I can make these um, investments from that. It's just how it works. I'm, again, I don't come from money. Uh, there is no um, there is no inheritance for me. There's n there's, there's no silver spoon. Uh, you know, grew up um, you know middle class property um, uh, in Scarborough. Um, parents don't own the house anymore. They sold it. And uh, that's it. So I'm, uh, it's just me and it's just you. So with, with us together, I think we're unstoppable. And if you feel the same way, um, join me for your move. But also, um, if you've got a really great story to tell um, and you've got a, you know, uh, something that you want to talk about, join me as well on my podcast because uh, you'll hear as many other voices on my show as mine. Maybe mine a little bit more sometimes. Um, but as far as getting really interesting stories and amazing guests, small business owners, musicians, comedians, just had an actor from a Netflix show. I had the CMO of Matterport, which to me is like the absolute upper level to me in real estate. Matterport is the Google of real estate. To me, that is the ultimate. Uh, and Robin, thank you for joining me. And of course, Alan at Salesforce, probably uh, what, wh who I consider to be the next uh, biggest leader in tech. Uh, I've known him for so many years. Um, the most positive, absolutely inspiring guy that I know. Again, nothing, nothing handed to him, hardworking. We get along on so many levels, but um, this guy, this guy's gonna, these two guys are gonna, to me, be the tech titans um, of, of, the, of this decade and maybe longer, I don't know. Uh, but they definitely know what they're doing and they're good, uh, good people with good energy. Um, and I'm hoping to align myself more and more uh, with those kind of people. I'm actually hoping to do, um, just to be able to keep my podcast going, I'm hoping to do sponsorships with those kind of um, smart, forward-thinking companies so that I can actually do um, sponsored podcasts for them as part of my, uh, you know, sort of securing my future and also helping me get out in front of more people. So that's really one of the things. Also, sponsored podcasts are uh, uh, available on my, um, on my website. So head over to realestatepodcastshow.com. You'll see the link there. Uh, and that will get you, again, the ability to have an intro played. Uh, and even to do an interview with your company as part of my, um, my show that helps me, again, get my message out and get the word out about the show and, and, and fund it. Because, again, any... Um, any big podcast you've ever heard of, including the biggest ones, um, you know, they've all started with and got to the point where, uh, you know, sponsorships are what, you know, helped pay the bills and um, take care of the marketing because I really want to make sure that I'm uh, treating my podcast as a separate entity from the rest of real estate because a lot of real estate techniques don't apply to podcasting. It's a very different beast. I've found that out uh, over the years and I want to keep it growing and I know that it's not going to be the traditional approach um, that will do that. I know there's another formula and I, and I know what it is, but I just have to, again, sort of go full in and treat that separately. Uh, talk about what's interesting to me, not just real estate, because that's the other thing. You'll see if you go back on my podcast, uh, a lot of them have nothing to do with real estate. It just has to do with what's interesting. And for me, it's about being interested, not being interesting. I, I don't, I try not to uh, dive too much into my own stories here, my own personal stories about me. But I do, of course, talk about stories that I've been through that might, you know, appeal to you or apply to you. Uh, and I'll keep doing that as much as I can, but I hope uh, I'll be able to be more of the storyteller for those who I'm connecting with and those I'm working with. So again, thank you, Toronto. Thank you, GTA. Uh, again, I have to thank the world because so many of you around the world have put me where I am. And again, I, I dreamed of being where I am many years ago in a position to be able to just even do what I'm doing here and I've just recorded a 30 minute podcast about thanking you and I absolutely have no regrets and I hope you've enjoyed it 
and make sure you stay tuned in. And I believe, I hope this is the one that helps me get to my 30,000 total downloads, which to me is a massive goal uh, on this. Hoping to go from 30 to 50, from 50 to 100, from 100 to a million. And I'm hoping that you guys who are here are going to help me do that, promote this, uh, help me promote this and help me get the message out there and just make sure that it's... Uh, uh, something that we, we can all benefit from together and if I do again hit all my goals including my helping 20 of you move goal very simple one um, there's going to be a lot of really good thing that's come that comes out of that so thanks again for tuning in and have yourselves a great day